Okay, good morning. Welcome to Bolton. Bolton. I want you, first of all, to notice how you come out of the station and it's a desolate Pripyat Chernobyl style concrete landscape free of any trees you come out and it's uh, they thought that oh, will make the concrete match the sky that'll cheer everyone up so we're gonna walk to the town center without rattling the camera too much so we're in weird times guys very strange times whether strange things are really happening or whether the militaries and the secret um, you know three-letter agencies are doing a psychological operation on the public whether it's one or the other, something very strange is going on. The, the psychological operation itself, when um, I watched it first thing this morning at half past five in the morning, they did a Pentagon briefing from deep in an um, underground military base. So it was uh, audio only, no video, which is very strange. In my 42 years, when something big and massive is happening, they get, you know, generals with loads of badges on their chest they'll come out the White House Pentagon public but this one was deep in a military base and in case you've uh, been living under a rock for the last few days we had the giant Chinese balloon big balloon big balloon boy went across America got shot down and just in the last 24 hours three or four cylindrical objects where the Pentagon refuses to rule out whether it's aliens. Hey, Elmo. Um, you know, what the hell, guys? You know, it's important when you see these massive stories, and it's probably, it'll be the biggest story in the history of mankind. Sorry? What's it for? I'm just doing a rant, just walking around doing a rant. Why, have you got something interesting in there? All right, no worries. All right, so, bloody hell, the middle of my work, people just interrupting me, questioning me, what are you filming? Where was I? <laughs> oh, let me, let me try and gather my thoughts. People annoy me. And uh, the, uh, just, just look at how ugly Bolton is, I'm sorry. <laughs> Hellhole. Is this the best that city planners and um, local councillors can come up with? Is a... Uh, a tragedy parade. I mean, if you want to land small military aircraft, Cessnas, in the town center, this is it. I mean, yeah, you've got a bit of building there, a bit of building there, but you could land a, a small propeller aircraft along this strip. That's what it looks like. Some sort of emergency war zone deep in the Congo. Okay, I've gathered my thoughts. I wonder if the deep gray pigeons treat the bronze pigeons with racism. It's like, get out of here. You're not one of us. And the bronze pigeons are like, yeah, but we make up a sizable minority. <laughs> so whenever the government brings out big, big, big news stories, China balloon, cylindrical Tic Tacs flying through our airspace, getting shot down by AIM-9X Sidewinder missiles. You have to wonder, what, is there potentially a psychological operation distracting people from finding out things? The answer is maybe. Maybe I, I hear that they are releasing, and now can, can we trust it's gonna be the full release or will it be fully redacted with black marker pen? The Jeffrey Epstein party list or the Jeffrey Epstein who traveled to the weird island list. And uh, yeah, you know, if we're gonna see videos and uh, you know, credible photographs and videos of uh, powerful billionaires and world leaders being blackmailed by Jeffrey Epstein, secret Mossad agent, in order to exert control over all the world's governments. <laughs> you know, if, if we're going to see George W. Bush and Tom Hanks tag-teaming uh, a little Filipino adolescent, the, the way they can hide that would be literally to have an alien invasion because um, nobody would be caring about Forrest Gump's Pinor if Little Green Man actually came into our atmosphere. So that, that's the PSYOP conspiracy theory. Maybe true, maybe not. But as a, a prime enjoyer 
of uh, geopolitics and world events, I, I consume it. Like, you know, some kid might be interested in Warhammer. Someone might be interested in football. I like geopolitics. That's my soap opera. <laughs> and uh, look, it's, uh, you don't often see a, ball, a spinning ball camera this close to the ground. I could almost touch it. So the town hall is pretty cool here in Bolton. Best thing about the town and uh, the Regency uh, sandstone streets behind it. You know, and it's also I, I live 25 minutes from Bolton, whereas I live 45 minutes from central Manchester. So uh, here we are. Here we are. She's like, oh no, he's dead now. God, I'm a mess. So, it's good to be suspicious and skeptical. Be very, very skeptical. It's good to be, what was her name, Lana Scully? Scully. You don't want to be Fox Mulder and all this stuff. He, he emotionally wanted to believe. He, he would be chasing aliens in his uh, Cocoa Pops. That's a, but it's better to have a skeptical sigh and say it's probably normal terrestrial state actors oh yeah you're right mate normal terrestrial state actors with um blimps you know small goodyear blimps put a bit of aluminium on it put a bit of a graphene chrome overcoat on it it flies around next thing you know you can you can test the american defenses just a week ago chinese satellite it got caught on video did a little laser a little laser strobe across hawaii What's in Hawaii? Pearl Harbor's in Hawaii. A lot of the U.S. Navy's in Hawaii, and uh, that's where the forces that would uh, would stop China invading Taiwan. It would come from Hawaii. So I'll tell you the beach view. Look at this perfect big uh, rollerblading and uh, cycling rink here. But no, it's uh, you're not not allowed because they want to keep it free. So that who knows why. It's, Empty. So here's the beach view. It's very, very most probably China, Russia, North Korea with some pretty fancy drones that use a mixture of, um, you know, light gas levitation, hydrogen, helium, whatever fancy gas they're using, as well as an outboard structure, maybe with some small propellers to give it a bit of a movability different to the big Chinese one that got shot shot down <laughs> but uh, it's probably that because obviously the world's getting weird now they really want Taiwan and uh, America's not gonna give up there's a lot of uh, there's a big uh, military operation taking place a military exercise taking place in uh, the South China Sea near the Philippines and near China near Taiwan and so China is, uh, and this is my theory, my theory, China is testing ways to overwhelm, overwhelm the American radar and their defenses. And uh, you see how much trouble three or four balloons can cause, or should we call them blimps? Blimps with extra appendages to make them look like little green men. Um, can you imagine if China released a hundred thousand car-sized helium blimps with little graphene aluminium extras on them over the American mainland. And can you imagine if some of those blimps carried small nuclear devices, which wasn't designed to flatten a city, but uh, the smarter of my uh, geopolitically addicted viewers will know that uh, a low-yield nuclear explosion up in the stratosphere can create a very powerful electromagnetic pulse which will fry all the microchips, all the integrated circuits in the nation. So what we're seeing is the new Cold War between the Chinese Communist Party and, uh, and uh, the West. And uh, are they going to side with uh, Iran and uh, Russia? I don't think so. I think... Uh, this is just my view, just an opinion. I think Russia, sorry, China feels that Russia is acting a bit like a drunken vodka swilling uncle at the Christmas party, throwing his fork across the table into the giant, giant, 
ch ch Chinese giant, no, into the giant leg of Turkey and saying, this is mine. My name is Sergei. And this is mine. And the Chinese are like, whoa, you fucking idiots. Thanks for giving NATO all the practice it needs to move vast amounts of ordnance, weaponry, and uh, logistics to an area. Thanks, Russians. Russia gave the West the dress rehearsal it wanted and needed to move vast amounts of supplies <laughs> into a region that isn't close to either America or Britain or, or what have you, or Israel or whatever. I don't, Israel's not part of NATO, are they? They're just like, why isn't Israel part of NATO? What side are you on, Israel? God damn it. Ugh. Check this out. Test and trace here at Bolton Council. All staff must swipe in using the green cottaging reader. Coming for a cottage? Cottage. Now, I know we looked at this sign earlier, but let's just have a good rant at it. How utterly pathetic it is to brutalize the central city square. The, the ground zero of Bolton. They're like, yeah, rather than policing it properly, we'll just put massive uh, red and white signs with not allowed, not allowed, not allowed. But the way they say not allowed is in the posh way. Prohibit prohibited behaviors. God, it pisses me off. Thank you, mate. Appreciate can, it. Can I get a picture? Of course you can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I watched your videos. You were in Bolton, what, five months ago? I was. Yeah. Oh, my God. Thanks. Thanks. She's like, no, Joey, just leave it. It's not worth it. Let's just ignore them. It doesn't matter. Just leave it, mate. Okay, we've talked about the Occam's razor cutting down the exciting stories to it probably being just a wind-up by political adversaries of NATO or the United States. But it's important, I guess, it's vital, vitali, to talk about what if it is aliens, as in extraterrestrial intelligent beings, or their robotic probes from an extraterrestrial civilization. Why, why now? Now, here's the thing. Why, why would they be doing all this now? Well, I've got a variety of theories, each one a little bit more schizo than the last. So, there are laboratories around the world, unfortunately, creating extremely powerful pathogens and viruses, which, if something leaks again, it could make the Chinese coffin sneeze look weak and pathetic, and that is scary. Russia is uh, saber-rattling their nuclear arsenal. They might even have a few working nukes that ha haven't been turned into corrupt oligarch yachts in the Mediterranean. They might do. So there's the pandemic threat of, of um, human annihilation. There's a nuclear annihilation threat. There is also, as a coinkydink, just in the last six months, AI has exponentially improved. The things they're doing with AI now, uh, I, don't, I honestly don't believe we're going to have a sentient <laughs> computer. It's, there's not going to be a, a person, a viewpoint, like a soul in these machines. But that might be its very danger. The fact it's a philosophical zombie. It has every out outward appearance of being a person and inside. Say, say, you know, the classic one, um, I didn't come up with this, I can't remember who did, but the AI is in charge of manufacturing for a nation, and you're like, wow, look, super efficient manufacturing. It even builds its own robots. And so let's say you've got a, a little suite of machines and robots whose job is to make paper clips, and then it runs out of metal. So, <laughs> so it starts grinding down our, our machines, our cars, our houses, the wires to make paper clips runs out of that. It might eventually start genociding human beings to get the iron out of our blood. Oh, a good, good reservoir of iron, those human beings, because it's not got any sentience. It, it doesn't see a human being as anything other than an iron ore mine. Oh, that hemoglobin, good, good, good iron in the hemoglobin. We better turn these humans into paper clips. So these are all my schizopilled theories that if, 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 if it is aliens, why are they coming now? And then uh, Eckhart Tolle would say, no, Charlie, the aliens are coming now because there is no past, there is no future, there is only now. Charlie, you have to, uh, ex 
you don't understand the power of now. And speaking of now, we now look at the revered son of Bolton, Dr. Fred Dibna, who got an honorary doctorate from the universities of Robert Gordon and Aberdeen and also Birmingham. And he is a giant. Look at that. Ladies, you may not like it, but this is what peak male performance looks like. Did you know that Bolton is one of the very few towns in England and Wales where house prices have gone down over the last 10 years? Very unique. And I can see why. It's as desolate and abandoned as Detroit. And again, where's the trees? Where's the trees? Bolton Council was like, oh God, guys, quick, quickly get down to Bank Street. There was a one tree we've not uprooted and destroyed. So Bolton Council, they realized, oh shit, it's a concrete wasteland with no trees. They've had to bring in these big pot, the big pots to put bushes in, look. And here's the back of Marketplace with a big cinema attached. Again, no trees. Who needs trees? Look at this boy. Hey! Star and Garter pub just behind Marketplace. Looks pretty cool. I drink in there. So it's about 10.30 a.m. and uh, this is one of the main streets in central Bolton. Question, where, where is everyone? It's a Monday. It's a working day. I'm in the middle of the road. St. George's house, eh? BP, BP, BP. Oh. My goodness, Bolton this morning. It's how I imagine all British cities will be. That, that eerie, empty feeling after the biological warfare has uh, fully taken its toll. Now, check this out. I can see about maybe two inches, five centimeters of clearance space between the top of Scania Lorry and the entrance into that underground car park. Okay. Wow. <laughs> that is confidence. He is very sure that he fits. My God. Hope you're enjoying the fits media. <laughs> Imagine having to have that sign on a church roof. Not even copper thieves, lead thieves. So this big church, lovely big red brick church, has been taken over by the redeemed Christian, Christian Church of God, Breakthrough Church, Bolton. If I was to take a guess, it's one of these weird African Christian cults, which is uh, very dancey, very singy, very energetic. Bolton skyline. Laborers having a break. It's going to be okay, boys. Here's one of these hated um, ascent, uh, assessment, uh, assessment center for the Department for Work and Pensions. For my international audience, big drama in this country many years ago when the conservative government came in and uh, they made a bunch of people get assessed for their disability benefits. And uh, a lot of people obviously struggled. They were actually disabled and the government said no 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 you gotta go to work hi there how are you you okay they're actually not in yet they're still over at elizabeth house when are they when are the when's the government coming here not till probably our summit minute oh they're over there which one and that that ugly one there no that big building which is dean's gate furniture oh dean's gate furniture oh the one near the yeah, going towards the town there. hall yeah i'll go i'll go and bother them over there yeah. thank you madam <laughs> cheers for that thank you but where is everyone? Honestly, where, where are the people? I've seen maybe six people in total. I've seen maybe five moving cars. Multi-layered, multi-leveled, excavated brick city. Bolton Probation Office, eh? Part of the National Probation Service. And uh, a while ago, about six months ago, maybe less, I was challenging some shoplifters in the Arndale shopping mall in Manchester and a lady, young lady, flashes her National Probation Service badge at me. Says, stop that now, I've seen what you're doing, you can't do this and that. I said, whoa, you're just, a, you're not a policewoman. And then she put, quickly tucked her uh, probation thing away as I filmed her and tried to um, get her to answer why she felt it was appropriate to flash 
a national probation service badge at a cameraman. Oh well, the probation building itself is quite a fetching, traditional, maybe three, four hundred year old stone building with crappy 1970s brick attachment. But across the road, it's progress. Are you progress or are you anti-gress? I'm progress. I'm going to stand on the side of grass. All right. I am lost in the nature reserve of Central Bolton. It's a very nice, clean area. And it uh, goes to show they were really controlling everything in the Victorian era. Look, it's a, it's a what do you call it? Cobbled, cobbled stream. It would have been a natural stream back in the good old days, but now... It's cobbled together with cobblestones. Wherever you look in Bolton, the people have moved out, the businesses are gone. And that development I was getting excited about being progress, guess what? It's uh, taxpayer money building houses, affordable housing. So it's not even a private developer, it's your housing, which is a housing association. And I saw Homes for England funding this development Everyone's gone, guys. I'm the last man in Bolton. We walk alongside yet another church in the city center next to this uh, nice uh, millennial monstrosity in a high, uh, what's it? Oh, God, what happened there? Something happened there. What do they call it? High occupancy. High density housing. That's what I was looking for. One more church celebration tonight one more church we're gonna celebrate uh-huh so gray and they're like yeah we'll, we'll, we'll make the cars gray too that'll help drill it go on get deep go on such a big machine you know i said bolton was ugly i was joking it's stunning for one street we're here on limon crescent and it's very nice let's get some sky out of the shot come on Come on, they don't need sky. 